What's up everyone, Seth Miranda here, and in the spirit of create no matter what and dealing with the situation that we all find ourselves in, I not only wanted to give you guys something to do as a challenge, but also something that you could probably use out there uh, because right now you, we're all laying low, but you can get yourself in order for running when we hit the ground later on. Uh, pretty much everyone needs to get their LinkedIn and their resume and their presence out there, you know, refresh their social, get their website, you know, updated. And one of the ways we do that is getting a clean headshot. And it's not so easy, one, by yourself, and two, with minimal gear. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that with basically just a camera, lens, and a speed light, and maybe some home objects or whatever you find in your space. As long as you guys understand the core principles of how lighting works, you can make better lighting. And we're gonna do that today. So let me go over my setup to show you how it can be simplified and made easier as a workflow and also how to get you better shots. All right, let's take a look at my setup. So as you see here, I have my Nikon Z6 with a 24 to 70 F4 lens, which is a basic lens. And I have a Profoto A1 on top, which is basically the setup is just a camera lens and speed light. Then I'm taking an HDMI cable from the camera over to my LG monitor. So if you have a TV, let's say you're doing this in your living room or wherever, and you have a TV, you can actually watch what you're doing in front of the camera live so you can actually see yourself. It's almost like having a mirror on the other side of the camera, uh, if you, but except it's even better because you can see your settings, you can see your exposure. You can even preview the photo so you don't have to keep moving away from the front of the camera. You can just keep seeing what's coming up as you're shooting. It's kind of like a back-end way of tethering-ish sort of maybe in a way, but not really. You're just seeing a preview of what's happening that's being written to your card. Not all DSLRs can do that, so just check with the manufacturer, you know, the manual or their website and see if the HDMI can put a signal out to a monitor while it's in live view setting. If you have a mirrorless camera, the EVF should be able to feed something out to HDMI and you can just plug it in and see what you're doing. So that takes care of the gear more or less, but what about the space itself? That matters just as much. A busy background doesn't help anybody look more professional or clean or keep their viewer focused on them, who they are, get to know them, feel like they're engaging. So if you take a look at my wall here in Brooklyn, space is tight and it is hectic and so are my walls. Uh, I made sure that every square inch of my place is covered with something and I don't like to disturb that too much and I'm sure people out there, wherever you're living or where you are right now, you might not ideally have like a clean wall or a psych wall or a place to even hang a roll of paper on stands. So I'm gonna show you guys at least two ways to clear out your background, make it nice and clean without having to touch anything on your wall. But before we do that, how about I take a shot with things as they are so we can see the evolution of this image uh, as we make choices to get to a final result. So let me just patch this in to this feed, which is basically what you're seeing from the monitor. In fact, if I stand in front of it, it starts grabbing my face because the face detection is on. But I want to give you this view because if you notice, the flashing light meter is basically saying that the image is super underexposed, which is what we want. We want to get our settings in our camera to a point where we're only recording the light that we're going to be creating, which is from the speed light. Once we start mixing all these other light sources, it gets inconsistent. We're starting to see shadows from other directions, all sorts of things. So this is probably your best bet is to get your image so underexposed that it's not going to really affect the final exposure. So this is, looks pretty good to me right now. I have ISO 100. There's the cops, it is Brooklyn. I am recording this in my home. So ISO 100, F4, 1 60th of a second, which is the fastest I'm gonna go uh, just to make sure everything's in sync. Uh, F4, because that's the widest this lens goes and allows me to shoot at a low ISO of ISO 100. And that also means that my speed light won't have to be stressing itself out to go into uh, power ranges that it might not need to go into. That way I can shoot longer with the battery life, all sorts of things. Uh, so this is pretty ideal for what I want to do. If I were to take a picture right now, it would be black like this. So this means that the live exposure settings are on in my camera. Uh, for something like this, you might want to shut them off. In Nikon, uh, when you turn on a speed light that has TTL or any sort of trigger that has TTL, it automatically gives you uh, this type of view so that you can see what you're doing because you're going to be shooting in, in theoretical light anyway, meaning that we're going to be shooting with the strobe doesn't exist until you take the shot and it only exists for a few milliseconds during the shot, so this makes it easy to work. If this doesn't happen, just take off the live exposure settings on your camera if you're using a mirrorless or EVF type system. Uh, just make sure that you're able to see what you're doing. In studio settings, you're not shooting the ambient light, you're shooting the strobe light that isn't even there yet. Keep that in mind. Okay, so I have the uh, camera in face detection and I have a five second uh, timer release. You can see that in this corner, top left, you can see 
five second exposure. I have it in AFC, so I'm making it sure that it's constantly able to change the autofocus. It's not locking in once it finds an expo uh, a focus point because I myself am moving and I also want to track me. That's what this yellow box is. So I also have this set up that I tap the screen. It, I tap it on my face theoretically because I can't really see what I'm doing. So no matter where I'm going, it'll keep me in focus. Now I also have this set to daylight white balance not flash, not Kelvin, not automatic. If you set your white balance in automatic, it's gonna adjust its color temperature based on the light that it's seeing now and not on the light that you're shooting. Same idea as the exposure, right? A black frame is really what is entering the camera. If we have white balance that's measuring this light and it changes it to blue or to orange or whatever the case might be, depending on the lighting you're in, fluorescent lights, tungsten, whatever the case, it reads that lighting and not the fact that you're shooting a strobe. So Make sure that you have your white balance set to daylight or flash. I prefer daylight because some cameras tend to make the flash white balance a little more yellow to counteract some speed lights that may feel a little bit more blue. I know I'm rambling, but it's all for a good cause. All right, we're shooting in raw and let's, oh, and I'm also in matrix metering. If you tend to have a problem with TTL and getting some exposure, put it in spot metering so it's focused on you as far as the exposure goes, and it'll probably give you some better results, especially if you're wearing something that's like white and very reflective. That way it's reading the light that's bouncing off of you and not the light for the entire scene. All right, let's take a shot like this. TTL, straight forward, straight on flash, and let's see what we get. So I'm gonna tap this. It is giving me this blinky light. I'm gonna give myself a pose. And this is a straightforward shot, hard shadow on the background, busy background, uh, shine on my face, all sorts of things. I know I'm a leather face, but you know, I think we can do better than that, right? But I'll go over here. I can take my strobe and bounce it into the ceiling, right? That's normally what a lot of photographers say like, oh, you don't wanna shoot it straight on. You kinda wanna bounce it forward. I'm even gonna give it a little bit of an angle forward so it hits the ceiling and it bathes down, right? Now, what's the issue that's gonna happen here? you're still gonna have shadows to some degree dropping downward because that's where my light source is coming from. The positives to this is that my light source now becomes the ceiling. If it bounces off the ceiling, that means it becomes larger. The larger the light source in relation to my subject, the softer it becomes. A speed light with a head this small is not gonna be soft ever, no matter how close I get it to myself, right? If I bounce it off the ceiling, the ceiling itself, it spreads across that and then bounces down. The larger the light source, softer it becomes, we'll get softer light. That doesn't mean dimmer, that just means that our shadow patterns become less contrasty. It means that those hard triangles and hard shadows that you see coming down, meaning a definitive line on those shadows, not gradated from highlight to shadow, they become softer. That's what you're looking for. It's not about exposure. It's about light pattern here. Okay, so let's try this and see what we get. Let me swap into the camera. I'm going to tap the back here. I'm gonna strike a pose. And now if you look at that, instead of this, you can see how quickly the light changed, right? But I still have half my face going into shadow. I don't look very happy there. No, I'm just kidding. And uh, you can see that the highlights went away. See on my, on my cheekbone right there, there's a hard highlight. And you see how there's a shadow on the background? Well, now we don't see a shadow so much, but we do see light falling off pretty quick going into shadow. So we got rid of the highlight and we got rid of the shadow on the background, but this still kind of sucks, including the busy background. So how can we fix this? Well, the easiest thing I can do is cover this up. I'm gonna take a roll of paper if you don't have a roll of paper, you can use a bed sheet, a blanket, some type of fabric, tablecloth, whatever you wanna use that is either a pleasing subtle pattern or a color that's more neutral tone like grays or maybe even like tans or something subtle, nothing like red and blue or whatever. You wanna go really uh, easy so that when it's small, and it's on LinkedIn or something like that, they're really engaging with you and your face and your um, your expression and who you are, not a crazy punchy color, unless you're doing something for branding maybe that's on social media and you want people to notice you because you're doing this more for creative purposes than professional purposes, knock yourself out. All right, 
So what am I gonna do is roll a paper? Well, I'm not gonna run it on a bunch of stands. If I did that, I would be off of the wall. I'd lose space. I'd also need stands and a crossbar. You might not have that. So this is a really quick trick. A lot of people use this at like conventions, um, trade shows, or type of event work, or maybe you're even at like the parade or the mermaid parade here in New York. It's crazy. I and mean, if you found a wall to tape a, a background to, this is an easy way to do it. I'm going to tack this up and roll it down backwards. So instead of me having to suspend it from the roll, I'm gonna suspend it from the end of the roll and use that as my weight going down. Now, you don't have to be super straight with it. You just have to make sure that it is high up. I usually go about two feet over head of my model. I am the model and I am six foot one. So this is gonna go about eight feet tall. So I'm gonna take my, uh, my trusty Apple box that I custom painted and get it up there. As you can see, that was pretty simple. Uh, it doesn't have to be straight because we're not shooting the top of that. And I don't really care about all of this because I'm gonna be shooting straight forward with a 70 millimeter lens. The, a longer lens is probably better in this case because you can compress the background. When you compress the background to the back of your subject, you need less of the background. It actually is a good way to eliminate your background or use smaller materials as a background, thus this. And I'm gonna show you not only with this, but another way to eliminate the background based on that same principle. So, you know, don't go too crazy. Don't do like a 200 millimeter lens or something like that, but a nice 70, 85 millimeter lens, 105s maybe, uh, but I would stay somewhere but 50 millimeter and up for something like this kind of shot. So now I have the background out of the way and I'm doing a softer light. Let's see how this looks. There's my photo from before. Okay, so I'm going to tap the back of the screen where my face is and I'm gonna get into position. And now we have the bounced light, but it's still black, all right? We're seeing texture on the background. I'm seeing uh, my glasses are creating this weird shadow. My chin is creating a weird shadow. It's still not nice. It's not a great image, but they'll always tell you, bounce off the ceiling, it's better. Yeah, it is better than straight forward, but in the end, we're still dealing with a lot of issues here. And I think that we can do better than this. How can we do better than this? Well, there's a few things we can do. Of course, you can put a bounce in there and try to illuminate things. Let's do that. I'm gonna take a piece of foam core, which you guys might know as the Brooklyn Reflector. If you don't have a piece of foam core, you can take a piece of tin foil. But before I set something up, let's just take a look at what this looks like. Then we'll figure out how to make it more permanent. But this still won't be a solution and I'll show you why. So I'm gonna even keep the silver there. I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna get us back into shooting mode. I'm gonna tap my face. It's gonna track me. I'm gonna put this right out of way just for myself, really quick as a test. And you think that this is better, right? Because we don't have all this crazy fall up, but look, there's still shadows from my glasses all over the place. The background still looks like it has like a waviness to it, which is gonna happen. I have a ton of picture frames under there. So how can we fix this? How can we get out of this corner we actually did work ourselves into and make a better shot? Well, basically I just need a larger and more diffused light source. I need it to be diffused because I wanna get the textures down. I want it flat and even, and I want it soft. The softer the light is, the less you're gonna to have to deal with. And keep in mind, I'm a guy with glasses, right? So this is an issue that a lot of you deal with. I get messages about this all the time when it comes to reflections of glasses, but what about the shadows and weird stuff that's happening in this image? Well, we can change a lot of things really easily and have like a kind of a permanent setup. Well, we can fix most of this with something super simple. Now you could use anything that transcends light and that's clean. I'm gonna use a straight up bed sheet. Yep, this is a brand new, flat, nice, not fitted sheet, real easy to set up uh, bed sheet. And I'm sure you guys have either bed sheets or even tissue paper could work. Of course, the larger the source, the better. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack it to the top of there. And if you're in the corner of a room when you set this up, you can tack it to the other side in the corner as well to start making like a tent, which is like a scrim, basically. This is, seems a little bit crazy, but when I set it up, you're gonna get so psyched on it. You can not only shoot just cleaner headshots, but you have groups of people in there. And keep in mind, we're doing this all with just one speed light. So let me set this up and we'll take a few shots and see how this changed things.
All right, so here's my giant scrim, which is basically a tent made out of a sheet and some thumbtacks. Now, I'm not saying you have to put holes in your wall, you could use gaff tape, whatever, but it's just to give you the idea of the principle that's going on here. This sheet is going to be my light source. I made sure not to cover the speed light. So it's, the speed light is still going to go up into the ceiling, bounce down, and then it'll hit this. This whole thing will now become my light source. It has a bit of a slope to it, so it'll more bathe this way rather than straight down. My shadow pattern will change. On top of that, the background become more even, textures will become minimized, shadows basically non-existent, and we'll have a nice really soft light. Let's try it without the bounce, then we'll put a bounce in, okay? Let's go patch ourselves into the Z. And now that's our old shot. Keep in mind, look at those shadows from the glasses right on my temple line right there. That's not exactly the best thing. And this is with a bounce. You know, that's with a reflector underneath, which everyone thinks solves everything. But we're gonna learn really quick that here's another way to do it. So I'm going to tap my face. It's still in TTL. And now we have a really subtle light, right? It's a little dark though. So I'm gonna tell TTL, hey man, give me an extra seven tenths of a stop. Let's take that shot again. I'm going to tap the back of the screen. It's tracking me. And now we have really soft light. Look, the shadows are gone. Look, see those? That's what we thought was okay. Now look, way cleaner light, way softer, way less textures, way easier gradational tone on my uh, shadows. And the background becomes less noticeable because even that becomes softer. Even though I have the most janky paper, overlaying a bunch of crooked picture frames, I'm still able to do a background like this. Now let's spruce this up even further, right? Let's give this uh, a nice reflector, a bounce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a stool. I'm gonna put it basically where, right in front of where I was standing. I'm gonna take my trusty custom Apple box right there, and I'm just going to put it right here. And I'm gonna take the foam core and remember, you might not have foam core, but I'm gonna show you a fix for that real quick. I think you guys already know, I think I already showed you. So what I'm gonna do is before I even set this down, I'm gonna change, let's go back into the camera. I'm gonna, I wanna change the, uh, the timer. So my camera here, I'm gonna go into I, I'm gonna go into five seconds. I'm gonna change it to 10 seconds, just to give myself a little bit more uh, leeway as opposed to going right to five seconds. So I can actually put this down while I'm tra tracking my own face. So now I am tracking my face. I'm putting this down. I'm gonna strike a pose. I don't know what to do because I'm weird and awkward just like you probably are. And now we have a nice clean reflected light back up. Remember, this is where we were. You see that under shadow right here, taking some of my skin texture down even though I'm a, I'm a total leather face. But this is where we were, right? Here we did a quick TTL, wasn't the best. We get told TTL to give a seven tenths of a stop more light, got it clean. And now we're going uh, really nice and clean for a headshot. And you can do a few of these in a row until you get something you like uh, pose wise. But I remember I'm looking at a monitor and hopefully you are as well, plugging your uh, camera into a TV like I suggested. If not, get yourself a mirror on the other side of the camera and you're pretty much fine. Now let's say I don't have Foam core, well, just get some sort of flat surface, some sort of table, right? Get it going like that, you know, stack something so that, or you can do this where you're not even standing and you're seated and it's even easier to stack something. Now you're gonna say like, what are you gonna bounce off of uh, cardboard? No, of course not. I'm gonna go to my Brooklyn dollar store aluminum foil. I'm going to set this down. Now this is gonna be more of a specular highlight, which some people like that way you have a super soft key light and your specular source gives you a little bit of texture, a little bit of snap, a little bit more in the eyes, so to speak. So let's go back to the camera. Let's go back to this. Let's get my face in there, tap it. Now it's tracking me and boom, really clean. I'm really weird, I'm ridiculous. But I mean, that is really clean. You don't see any reflection in my glasses, right? I mean, you totally see every pore that I got, but whatever. I mean, I do this to every model, so I guess it's only fair that I do this to myself, right? I mean, I could even go as far as to not worry about a reflector and just use a straight up pizza box. This is the real Brooklyn reflector. So let's set this up. 
I'm gonna go like that. I'm going to tap the back of the camera so it tracks me. I'm gonna put this like right about here. I'm gonna fix my glasses, back up a little bit more maybe. And boom, there's a reflector right there. And I can tell you it's a reflecting. I can tell you that it is reflecting rather because in my eye, you can see there's a pizza box illuminated and reflecting back into me. So there you go, kids. Uh, just so you have an idea of what that's about. So what's this good for? Groups, right? Get the family in there, get your kids in there, get people you care about, get your friends together. Uh, I know there would be social distancing, but if you're already in a space with people, this is a good way to kind of get the shots the way you wanna get them without having to worry about moving a bunch of stuff. It's a nice, clean, open light. It's also good for just covering a large area. Maybe you have to shoot something like your own artwork, like paintings or whatever you have to get onto a website. This will get you a big, even light right onto some sort of um, surface. So a painting is really good, but just keep in mind that you'll have fall off and you're gonna need more of a reflector on the other side. So maybe even take another bed sheet and put it along the floor so that you're putting your artwork up. You shoot it, reflects back up, and you have a nice, even light uh, with just one speed light. Keep that in mind. That's the big thing. If we're doing this with just a camera and a speed light and a sheet that I may or may have taken from a hotel over my years on the road. I should probably also address the fact that if you don't have a camera that does tracking for autofocus, like face detection, eye detection, things like that, it's okay. You don't have to worry about that so much, but you do have to be more aware of how you use the environment. So if you have something you can focus on, right? Uh, a stuffed animal, anything, a chair, whatever you can put in the position you're, you like your frame at, focus on it, switch your camera to manual, and as long as the distance stays the same of you to that lens, you'll be fine. It's when you start moving that things go out of focus because that's what focus is based on, distance of subject to camera. So make sure you're aware of that, put a mark on the floor, gaff tape, uh, put something there. And no one's gonna see it on the camera anyway because it's completely out of frame. So just make sure you mark yourself. Okay, so the reflector is out of the way. I'm gonna set up this white foam core as a background and show you that even a small piece of material can make a decent background. Let's do this. So I'm gonna take this Manfrotto uh, carbon nano pole stand. You can use whatever, a light stand, a tripod, a chair, whatever works, uh, or even tack it to the wall itself, whatever works for you. You just have to get this up straight and flat. So I'm gonna put this on the floor. I'm going to give myself some height here on this stand. And I'm using this purely because it's what I have around me, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is take a clamp uh, and I'm going to take the back of this I'm gonna clamp this subtly to the stand itself. And what I'm basically going to do is use my LG monitor. Here, you guys can watch with me. And I'm gonna watch how this is sitting in the frame. So right away, I know I have to come more towards me. And I'm making sure that my lens is zoomed all the way. That way it's compressing that background. I'm gonna back it up just a touch. Oh, it's still, there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is, I ah, will do it with the pizza box, why not? I'm gonna take the pizza box, I'm going to tap the back of this screen, I'm gonna go like this. And now I have a white background. Is it the whitest of white backgrounds? No, but it gives me, but it gives me a different type of feel should I want it. And you can do this with like whatever color paper, but this is also a background out of a piece of foam core, keep that in mind. All right, yeah, these are tight shots. Obviously with the gray, I will have more leeway in zooming out. In fact, if I just move this out of the way, let me just move this out of the way, and I just take a shot with the gray background, I can zoom out and it will track my focus and I can get a little more zoom. I can do a, a vertical if I wanted and you know, I have more leeway. So, and you can always zoom out, crop in, whatever you wanna do later on, but these are all options for you. Um, keep in mind, this is a homemade setup. This is doing what we can with what we got and just trying to get a better result than if we did nothing at all. Uh, if you wanna have a smaller setup and not have to do a ton of this, and you are somebody that has some photo gear, keep in mind the circle reflectors, right? You, whoop. <laughs> You can just use the diffuser circle, you know? But the problem with this is that it's usually too small 
to reach the background to be an even light on yourself and the background at the same time. So give this a shot. Let me know how you guys are doing out there. Um, keep in mind, uh, this is gonna keep going, create no matter what. So when you shoot something that's part of these challenges, hashtag create no matter what, hashtag Adorama, tag me, tag Adorama, so we can find what you're doing out there. I wanna see what your versions of this are. Oh, don't forget to show the setup. Take the photo and then show us what the setup is as well, because that's kind of the funnest part of it, right? Uh, and be sure to check out the other hosts who did challenge videos. Everybody out there that's on this roster has put some kind of video out there, or will be rather. I'm not sure where this is gonna lie when this gets released. But thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys are staying safe out there. Stay home, get creative, have some fun. What's the worst that happens? You took a few minutes to put some thumbtacks up? Come on, all right? Uh, I hope you guys are all safe and let's make sure that we give ourselves the best position possible for when we're ready to get back out there. I'll see you guys next time. My name is Seth Miranda, last X witness on pretty much all social media, Twitch, YouTube, everything. Follow me, tag me, and I will see you guys next time.